Hi everyone, so it's Coach Fred. I'm back today for a quick little review of function notation. Okay, so I know that there's lots of formal definitions for function notation, but we're really gonna just talk about what it means for you on this SAT test, okay? So function notation is another way to write y. So um, you learned like to write a linear equation y equals 2x plus 5. Function notation is a way for us to write another name for y, to write the same thing. The reason we like function notation is because x then becomes the input and then 2x plus 5 becomes the output. So it's just something you learned in Algebra 2 and it was like a newer way to express y. Um, now the SAT likes to use both of these. Um, so you're going to see them, they're going to jump back between function notation and y. Um, and they might just ask you something really basic. How could you use function notation? So if I said to you f of x equals 2x plus 5, find f at 2. Well, all that means is that the input, because the input is always where the x is, the input is 2 and it wants the output. So I would take that 2 input, I'd plug it in for x, and I'd simplify. So I get 4 plus 5, which is 9. So f at 2 equals 9. 9 is the output. That actually represents the coordinate point to 9. Okay, so a couple things. Linear functions. If we're going to write a linear function and we're going to use function notation, then it has to be in slope-intercept form. It has to be in slope-intercept form. So, um, like, I can't use point slope or standard form and use function notation, although I guess I could, but normally you're going to see it in, um, I like to call it function form for um, linear functions. All right, let's look at some examples. So here's a basic example. They say some values of the linear function are shown in the table above. Which of the following defines f? All right, so when we ask you to define something, that means we want the, like, the name for it. We want the definition for it. When we want to define a function, we want the equation. So it's asking you for the equation. Now, you might have like looked at the answers to see, oh yeah, it's looking for an equation because these are all linear equations, right, in function form. They told me it was linear, so you have to think about what the minimum you need to write a linear equation would be. Hopefully you're saying, I need a slope and I need a point. If I have those two things, then I can write an equation. All right, well, the first thing I want to always do is find the slope. So I'm going to do the change in y over the change in x. Okay, so change in y over change in x. So change in y just means subtract the y's. Remember, f of x is just another name for y. So these are my y values. So I'm going to subtract them. So uh, 15 minus 6 gives me 9, and 24 minus 15 gives me 9. And then I'm going to subtract the x's. So 4 minus 1 gives me 3, and 4 minus 7, or 7 minus 4 gives me 3. So I'm going to put my change in y, which was 9, over 3, so I get a slope of 3. Well, that helps me immediately, okay? It helps me immediately because 4... The slope has to be 3, and this is not the slope, and this is not the slope. So I can eliminate answers. Then I look at it, and I need the y-intercept. But what was what's standing out to me is, um, is the 3 and the 1. Okay, so I don't have a 3 and a 1 on this side. I have a 1 over here, but that's clearly not the y-intercept. I actually know that my y-intercept has to be, you know, pretty close to 6. All right, so what can I do? I can do two ways. I could quickly graph, I could quif, quickly write an equation of a line in point slope form, which is what I did. So I did y minus 6 equals 3 times x minus 1. And then I just put it in a slope intercept form. So y minus 6 equals 3x minus 3 and add 6. And so y equals 3x plus all right, so that's one way of finding that equation. You could have um, used slope-intercept form and plugged in the x and the y. Um, you also could have really just kind of thought about it. Like if you went back, instead of 3, went back one one and a half. Like you went back that way, one and a half. You'd be just a little bit before 0, so you'd have to go back this way, 4 and a half. So you'd be between um, 3 and, or you'd be between 2 and 6. So you could have kind of reasoned your way through this 
Um, but I like a clear, quick way, and so I decided I was going to use y equals mx plus b. Okay, um, let's make a question. They sometimes like to make questions look harder by using f of x. All right, so now let's look at this question. Sometimes they like to make a question look harder um, just by using f of x. And so in this equation, it says when the equation f of x equals 5x plus p, where p is a constant, that's actually important because that's telling me p is a number, not a variable. Even though it looks like a variable, it's a number. Um, so where p is constant is graphed in the xy plane. The line passes through the point negative 2, 1. What is the value of p? So if a line passes through a point, that means that if you plug that point in, it makes it true. It makes the equation true. That point can also help us find missing values. Remember, f of x is just another name for y. This could really be written as y equals 5x plus p. So I can take this coordinate point that is an x, y, and I can substitute those values in for x and y to find p. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to plug in 1 for y. I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x. Anytime I plug something into an equation, I'm going to put it in parentheses. And then I'm going to simplify. So 1 equals negative 10 plus p. And then I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Notice I'm not skipping steps. So p is 11. I'm not skipping steps because I would guess that if I skipped a step, I might say that p is negative 9, right? By doing something like just by not really taking and considering those numbers really well. So you want to be very careful because every common mistake you could make, there is going to appear on this test. All right, one more question. All right, so let's look at this, this one. Um, this one's a little bit different than the other two that we've just worked with. So it says the function below is linear. And it gave us a function table, but it gave it to us uh, horizontally instead of vertically. Um, if it makes it more, you know, if it makes it more comfortable for you to, you can certainly write it vertically. Um, okay, and it says, what is the value of f at three? Okay, so it wants to know when x is three, what's y? That's what this question is asking. When x is three, what's y? Or f of x? Okay, well, it, it, there's a couple ways you could do this. One way would be to actually write an equation for the function. Um, and you would do that by finding the slope. And you can do that by finding the slope quickly by doing the change in y. So we've got 4, 6, and 2. And this is going up 2. The change in here is 3, and the change here is 1. Now, you might be saying, well, all those numbers are different. Aren't they supposed to be the same for the slope? Remember, slopes are ratio. So if you look at this, if you put the change in y over the change in x, you get 4 over 2, or 6 over 3, or 2 over 1. So the slope is 2. Okay. And then you'd need a y-intercept or a point. Well, I actually noticed right away that I was given the y-intercept. I really play, pay close attention when I have a point that has a 0 in it. I always always, always pay close attention to that because that means it's either going to be the x-intercept or the y-intercept. In this case, it's the y-intercept. So I could quickly write an equation of this line. The equation would be y equals 2x minus 1 or f of x equals 2x minus 1. So that would allow me to go ahead and plug in 3. So I would evaluate the function at 3, which would give me 6 minus 1, so it would give me 5. Now, that's one way, and that took me a few seconds, but it might be a good approach for you if you understand what to do with linear equations. The way I actually looked at this is I saw that the slope was uh, 2 over 1, and it was wanting when the value of f was 3. It wanted when x was 3. So I knew 3 had to be between these two points, 2 and 5, right? Which meant my y's had to be between 3 and 9. So they couldn't, my y's couldn't be negative 10, my y's couldn't be 2, and my y's couldn't be 14. So my answer had to be 5. So that is another way of doing it, kind of thinking through the, the logic of the problem and what it means to find f of x and why something that's linear means it's going to either be rising at the same, at the same rate of change or declining. 
Anyways, so that's my short little recap of linear functions. Hope that was helpful. Have a great day.